here's something completely different for the channel. So my dad was always into all these old bikes and stuff, so I grew up seeing um, all sorts of wonderful things from um, Harleys to aerials and you name it really. And a few friends of mine, Louie had a couple of nice um, Ducatis and I painted a motor guzzy for a guy one day. So I seen this pop up on Facebook and I thought I'd wander out and have a look because it was in the neighbourhood. And it's a um, reasonable size show. So unfortunately it rained a bit in the morning so it sort of slowed thing up, things up a little bit. And by now it had just started to settle down. But it was just enough to put a bit of water on the ground and on the, some of the bikes. There's quite a lot of unusual bikes and a very wide range of bikes at this show. So the weekend's organised by the AMCA of Australia and they have judging there and they had quite a lot of seminars and things and also an auction. And um, these bikes out the front here were on um, show as part of the um, People's Choice. And this was quite early on and then the bit we just watched was a bit later where there's a, a second row of bikes had turned up but probably the weather kept the few away I would think. Part of my reason for heading up was a um, few of my friends had um, Honda 4s and um, Quaker 9s and that sort of stuff back in the day. So we're inside the hall now and super nice Harley Davidson here with the sidecar and all on it. And I had a quick chat to the guy that owned that bike and he'd had it there the year before without the sidecar and then they'd spent um, the year putting that sidecar together. So same thing, my dad had a, um, an aerial, aerial square forward with a, a dusting sidecar that he'd actually made from scratch because he couldn't get one. He found a frame at a swap meet and then made the actual sidecar itself. In fact, he made two in the end because his mate wanted one as well. So my dad was a tank maker, so he um, had those sort of skills. Probably rubbed off on me a bit, I dare say. So the theme for the show was board trackers, bobbers and cafe races and there was a few of those there but you've got to imagine hanging on to something like that, have a check that out. And obviously being a bit of a bling guy, the, the fully restored stuff really grabs my eye but there was some really well maintained original bikes there from the early 1900s as well. Now, I was filming that and I walked past and then you'll see I'll go back for another look because check out the name of the bike. Now, I don't know that I've ever seen a Howard before. And of course, that caught my eye. Something like that, how's that for totally original? You know, trying to get the focus right with this bit of tape just in the way all the time, but we'll do the best we can.
So those people who've been watching the shows, you would have seen that um, Summon Ups and also Cooley Rocks um, pick ups and utes with bikes in the back and there's a few classics here that would look good at some of those shows. 1898, eh? Look at that. Three wheeler. You can sort of see that transition from push bike to motorbike, can't you? So this was sort of early on the sad day, so things had just opened and the rain had just sort of gone away. And some of these bikes were just being pushed in. It's a stunning looking thing, isn't it? So that's on the brochure. So that was um, one of the draw cards, obviously, and beautifully built. And then these guys were just bringing a couple of original bikes. Imagine trying to hang on to one of these things at over 100 mile an hour, eh? Well, now that's an unusual looking piece of gear, that is. Got the, um, the swing arm there with the, the shocks. Very late model style in an old bike. Sorry about the moving all over, it's a bit hard with this tape and stuff in the way. These are a bit more my era, so when I first um, got my licence was um, mid-70s, so these were all a go. And my mate Ash, Ash Gers had Honda 4, that colour in the red. My brother-in-law Keith has got a bit of a um, collection of bikes, including a Honda 4. Very nice, love that candy red. I think that red Honda was for sale for 20k. I don't profess to know everything about all of these bikes or the whole thing, but I just, it's interesting to go along there because all the names, the AJS, the Matchless, I, I know all the names, but I don't know much about them. And it's just been something that's always, I've had an interest in and uh, it was nice to get out there and have a look and take the opportunity. Look at the nice machine work on this.
BMW. Eh? They always had um, some unusual things. So one of the first with the direct drive. Now all these bikes along this wall were all part of the auction and I didn't go and um, check that out because I've got a bit of a habit of not keeping my hand in the pocket at the auction. So quite a good range of, of bikes and variations in bikes in the auction. speedway bikes there so there's a few more of those there's a, a bit of an area up the back with some speedway bikes I'll see those in a minute So I've spent a couple of hours out there on the Saturday morning and um, run into a few people that watched the channel and, and had a bit of a chat to different people about different things and it's just good to go somewhere and see something completely different to what um, I'm normally doing. Okay, so that's the end of the auction. So we've gone back over the other side now, run along the back wall and some nice Harleys there. It's a bit like all the cars, I suppose. I was gonna say, you wonder where they keep finding all these, but there's no end of places that um, Got something tucked away in the corner and I guess with motorbikes they don't take as much room as having a whole heap of cars so So these look like they fit into that cafe racer and bobber glasses. Nice Norton. Yeah, these are those speedway bikes, so a couple of Jawas and a Jap. And these guys were from look like one of the historical clubs or associations from the speedway side of things and Heather and I loved the solos at the speedway and Broken Hill used to have some, um, some good events there and down at Rowley Park in Adelaide. My earlier days in the 60s, 70s, probably early 80s. here some of the, the photos from that organisation of the different tracks and some of the bikes and riders. Definitely brings back some good memories for me now.
for sale. Six grand looks like pretty good buying, so it's a little 250. Now check this one out. This looks to me to have a little supercharger sitting on top there. So there's some really cool modified bikes in this little group here. Now check that out. And that's uh, trendy paintwork to go with it. That looks a bit more like a dirt track bike to me, that one. I'm not really sure, but I'd, I'd say that's like long track. And then next to it, this is something very unusual. So it's got a drag slick on the back of it, and obviously twin engine. And there would have been a bit of engineering went into that when that was created back in the day. It would have been a fair sort of handful, not much of a seat on it. Just no end of variation. Now check out some of the custom work on this. The back guard's pretty cool with the, the lights all moulded in. Definitely a lot of bikes here that I'd never seen before, that's for sure. Now this group here, pretty sure we're out of South Australia from a, a club that raced on the beach. And I know my dad did run, go down there and run something on the beach down at, um, I can't think of the name of the beach now, but it was always the thing, you know, in the 40s and 50s find somewhere you could go fast and I overheard him saying that I think this particular bike here that's in frame now was a, did 150 mile an hour. That'd be a bit of a handful on the challenge wouldn't it? The size of that front tyre. <laughs> Selix Beach, that's the beach I was thinking of. I'm sure that's the beach in Adelaide that they um, used to run these on. Cross section of bikes there. What I'd call a late model on the end that someone else might call an early model if they're only 20 years of age, but it looks like about a 70s Kawasaki. Back when I was a young fella, the Quaker 9, the Kawasaki 900 was all the go. So that was the main hall and the majority of the bikes and there was some more outside that were actually in the, the judge section. We'll probably head out there now and have a look. So I couldn't get in behind the fence. I tried to get in there but I wasn't allowed in there. So these bikes were all being judged in, in a class that when I was listening to the guy giving a bit of a speech that they were being judged on the basis of being authentic. So it didn't matter whether it was a Harley or whether it was a Honda or whether it was something else, it was about 
how they were presented, whether they were restored or unrestored, as close as possible to how they were brought out from the factory originally. And that was the criteria they were working on. And the same as this whole show, just a, a really wide cross section of bikes. I would have liked to have got in and got a bit closer, but I couldn't do that, so we just did the best we could. It looks like one of them Kawasaki 900s right there. That Harley that's coming up there, the War Harley, that's very similar to what my dad restored one of those in the late 80s. So he used to attend these sort of events and the swap meets looking for parts because they'd pretty much start off with the frame and then start hunting for parts and we'll see some of that in a minute. So we're out on the Oval, so this was at the Bulleye Showgrounds, which is, um, I don't know if they still run the trots there, but it was a trotting track and then a dog track on the inside, and like I said, we'd had just enough rain to be a bit frustrating. With all sorts of traders, you can see this guy's still on the ramps to get him in the back. But along with all of that, there was some nice bikes amongst the traders as well. And an opportunity for those people that are trying to put a bike together We'll find something to start on, nice matchless. I know my mate Tony Ray learnt to ride on a matchless 500 when he was only a young fella. There was a few traders there, you know, the polishers and the, those sort of guys, but then a lot of bikes for sale, all sorts of bits and pieces, and then a little bit of bling and a lot of um, rusty old hard parts that you need to actually assemble something that you're starting on, so... People that know what they're looking for, it's probably gold, and for someone that's got no idea, they're walking along and think, what's all this junk doing here? This guy's found himself a couple of items he's looking for. So it's a three day event this one and um, people camp on the oval there and set up their, their stands and it's a bit of a shame that we just happened to get that bit of rain. It's a bit like American Pickers, I've watched that show a bit, I always see them get all excited about an old engine they find under a tarp or something and like I say a lot of people look at this and say it's a whole lot of junk but if you're build a, building an early 1900s bike and you're missing that one part you've got to go to these swap meets to try and find it. And now this guy here, he was more 70s or 60s, little trail bikes and Yamaha parts and stuff. Couple of all nice speedway bikes. And there's one of those that he's probably looking for bits or he's selling that because he can't find them one or the other. A couple of nice bikes here as well. I imagine they'd be long trackers by the look of those.
there, so if it wasn't for the rain, these would probably be out of the trailer by now, but it did clear up for the weekend, so hopefully the boys had um, a good weekend in the end, because I was there like nine o'clock Saturday morning, and it cleared up after that. Now there's a nice project to get started with. These really early ones fascinate me. I can't crump the hen right around on that. So if you're sitting on some early 60s bikes, it looks like there's a market for those. So there's probably people looking at things in their shed going, oh, one day or half a chance it would have got thrown out at some stage. But um, there's obviously a market for everyone and everything. I reckon that's a Yamaha TT, they were all a go when I was riding, or when I was trying to ride, I never could ride real good. Now here's a bargain for you, six grand. What you see is what you get. Now how's this for a classic? So obviously a work truck and it just sort of blew me away that love the flares, the sill panels and then it's just been chopped off at the back and put the one tonne of tray on it and away we go and had the trailer on the behind. So it's obviously still a workhorse. That pretty much going to cover what we've seen there, so it was just an opportunity to get out, grab a bit of footage, bring you guys something different, and um, we're going to continue to do that once a month and go out and find anything automotive just to continue to add to our library on Astle Design. So, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you on the next show.